Hello, I would like to introduce you today uh, the new ODAC M2. It is an audio matrix that is actually focused more towards the media market. Uh, we already had the R2, which is getting quite popular. And now I've added uh, at the ProLight and Sound Show the M2. Now the difference, the main difference between the device are especially the inputs. They are balanced and we're able to mix all the inputs on each output. So compared to the R2, that's a big upgrade. Uh, and there's also a lot more DSP power inside. So on each input and output, we have a card that has a DSP inside. So in total, it has 11 DSPs, which will allow us to um, do things that we're not able to do right now with the R2. For instance, I'm shortly going to show you inside the software. What we're seeing here is actually a screen of the web interface that it has built inside. All our multi-zone systems have a web server built inside. Why? Because we believe in the philosophy that all our devices will become like a website. We can control it from any device. We also have some applications, like you can see over here, uh, with for iPads and iPhone and Android. Now, and this is just the website that we serve to, and it's a touch screen, so I can show you around a little better. This is the basic layout. You see that we have eight zones. We can name the zones. That was also possible with the R2, of course, um, but it has some extra functions, especially when we go to settings. So now we're in the settings for the first zone, and we're able to see that we have, um, we were able to mix each input so for instance, you can see that we're 100% on input one. I can drop that down a bit and add input. Uh, I'm sorry, I was talking about input two, add input one. So we have like 50% of input one coming through and a little more than 50 for input two. Uh, main difference is also that it has a multi-voice file inside. So thanks to the timer settings, we're able to trigger the multi-voice file or even do it on the contact inputs so just plug in an SD card where you have your files on and you can start playing um, now as you can see over here we have current that means that we have scenes we have eight scenes preset scenes and we have eight global scenes now this scene each scene is actually for each individual output and we also have for each eight outputs, we have global scenes. So if we have a setting and we have a meeting and that microphone needs to be at that level, that microphone needs to be at that level, uh, we have anti-feedback inside. So we're able to trigger those things, all those features. It has a five band EQ that we can set uh, on the input and a five band EQ on the output. So that's, yeah, that's something um, something extra that was also not available on this model. Tom, uh, can, you, um, can you make the interface more simple for another user? So obviously that's a complex interface for a, a guy who knows audio. Is it possible to make something simpler to put on a touch screen in a room for a, a guy who's using the boardroom to, to you know, choose, choose the scene, change the meeting function? Yes, of course. That's actually one of our, our strong points that we want to, to point out with this device. Um, a lot of audio matrix uh, that work with DSP that are already on the, available on the market, they have like this towing uh, sort of technique where you need to tow in all your things that you need to do and save there and pull some wires. But over here, as you can see, you know, I'm, if I'm going to sound settings, you don't have to be like a, a brain surgery to say, okay, I want a bandpass filter inside. Just click on it and you can select your bandpass and it also has a visual towards it so it's quite intuitive and simple to use you're not able to be a, you don't need to be a brain surgery to to control the device and where, where do you think this is uh, going to be successful what markets what applications are you particularly targeting with it I think it will uh, go towards like the, the the example that I'm giving here uh, big companies um, uh, public buildings yeah, this is something more. We also have the MTXs that will be more towards restaurants, uh, smaller companies, company buildings. Uh, this this could 
This is used a lot in, in public buildings, train stations. Thanks to the optic fiber kits, we're able to go great distances and go to great zone uh, heights in numbers. So yeah, there, it's like I said, it has, uh, it has several DSPs inside and it allows us to link zones, uh, bridge the amplifier. Do you have uh, optional inputs on the back of the cards, like uh, interchangeable modular? In yes. terms of fiber and, and other connection yes, types? Yes, yes. Um, so we have several options and peripheral devices. I'll go through shortly the, the options okay. that we have. For instance, the screen. This is a touch screen on the front side. It's an option. Why? Because in some cases it will be built inside a rack and it will just stay there. Uh, it's like a, a technical room. Uh, they won't you know, they won't use it at the front side. So we decided to make that an option. You would have a blank plate at the front side. Tom, talk us through some of the options that we have available on the input-output side. Uh, okay, so we'll start off here. You see that we have the internet connection. See that um, we have a lot of RE45 connections over here. Now, we always want to work with CAT5 cable. Why? Because data cable, everything we have is digital and it's just a really cheap cable to use. Uh, simple to uh, make the connection on it, the RU45 connector on it. So these eight are actually for the peripheral devices. Um, you're not um, limited to eight peripheral devices. You're able to hang them just behind each other as much as you want. So we have the uh, paging tables. Uh, we have all the wall panels, several types of wall panels with uh, inputs, mixing inputs and without inputs. Over here, we can see that we have the optical fiber. It has a link in and a link out, which will allow you to go from uh, matrix to matrix. Over here, you have the contact inputs. This will allow you to trigger priorities, uh, link zones at a certain moment. For instance, if the door closes, you know, you have two separate zones. If the door goes open again, the contact lets loose and becomes one big zone. Um, then the priority inputs, it's the same. Um, and we have four extra inputs, RCA inputs, line inputs, uh, which we can choose from. Then we go to the, uh, the central inputs, eight inputs and eight outputs. Here you can see that they're all balanced, like I mentioned. Uh, on the outputs, you can see that it has signal outputs, but it also has powered outputs. Now this is another optional card that we can place inside and it's a power kit so this will make it not a pre-amplifier anymore but a powered version of uh, what kind of power of are we talking model. about then uh, we're talking about eight times uh, 60 watts okay so enough to drive a ceiling speaker or something like that in a, yes. a meeting room or something for instance yes right. 